to the nation's capital after eight years, former Liberal Justice Minister David Lametti is leaving politics. He made the announcement with mixed emotions. He played a big part in the decision to invoke the Emergencies Act during the Ottawa protests, a decision he says he's still confident about. His departure comes just days after a federal judge ruled it was in fact unconstitutional, unreasonable and unjustified. Now the groups that brought forward the case in the first place are preparing for the Liberals' promised appeal. You know, bring it on. We're ready to fight. Strong words from Christine Van Gyne, the litigation director of the Canadian Constitution Federation. The CCF was one of two groups that took the feds to court and emerged victorious over the use of the Emergencies Act. But as you know, the Liberals plan to appeal. We do not want the government to appeal. We think that this is the correct decision. Uh, it will be a waste of taxpayers' money to go through this exercise all over again because we think the result will be the same. It's been three days since the bombshell ruling and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has yet to answer questions. Last night, he attended the Ottawa PWHL game. What uh, an amazing opportunity for us to be here. And today, he addressed the Liberal caucus. <laughs> but still no mention of the Emergencies Act drama. We hear what Canadians need. We're there in the communities, we're there listening to people, understanding their frustrations, their concerns, but also their hopes and dreams for the future. In a shocking twist today, former Justice Minister and Montreal MP David Lametti says he is resigning from public office as of the end of this month. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau appointed him as Federal Justice Minister and Attorney General in 2019, and he closely oversaw the convoy protests in Ottawa. In the federal court decision this week, Justice Mosley credited the CCF and Civil Liberties Association for changing his mind on the matter. He found the Liberals' invocation to be unjust. The notion that the high threshold to invoke the Emergencies Act was not met and that the regulations enacted under the Emergencies Act, that was the freezing of bank accounts and the prohibition on protest gatherings, that those measures were unconstitutional. Aside from this federal court ruling, there was also a public inquiry led by Commissioner Paul Rouleau last year. Over 7,000 documents were submitted and more than 70 witnesses testified over six weeks, including Trudeau. We were seeing things escalate, not things get under control. The commissioner in that inquiry found that the Liberals did meet the threshold to invoke the act. So why the differing opinion now? The federal court is, has the weight of binding precedent. The federal court had ex a lot more time to come out with a decision. The Rouleau Commission had sort of this fire hose of evidence and had to have a report done by a statutory deadline. This judge was able to take his time with the evidence and ultimately reached a different conclusion. As for the people living downtown, the marginalized groups, the businesses that had to shut their doors, what they went through. The police, of course, should have enforced the law and removed those protesters. That ultimately is what happened at the borders. At the borders at Coots, the, the people were charged using existing criminal law. Uh, and that's what should have happened in Ottawa as well. The review of the act's use revealed a major policing failure in the nation's capital. And after Police Chief Slowly's resignation, the pressure was on. The policing plan that they developed before the invocation of the Emergencies Act was the same plan that they used after the Emergencies Act was declared. And since we know that the protests were cleared using existing law, we know that it was not used as a tool of last resort and therefore the threshold wasn't met, which makes its invocation unreasonable and unconstitutional. We're joined tonight by University of Ottawa Professor of Criminology, Michael Kempa. Michael, I want to start by asking you about the breaking news this afternoon. What do you make of the former Justice Minister David Lametti's resignation today? Well, it is, that's a shock uh, in the sense that obviously the ruling of the court seems to pin the decision of the federal government uh, on him uh, in the sense that he was acting as the attorney general, which is the government's lawyer. And it was his advice principally uh, that led to the government invoking the Emergencies Act in, in the sense that he sifted through everything that the government had at its disposal from 
CSIF, from the RCMP, from the Prime Minister, uh, the Privy Council Office, and so forth. If in the end, though, I would say the federal government would want to pin everything on one person in David Lametti, uh, I would simply say it is not that simple. It is a far more complicated chain of events. And although I feel badly for Mr. Lametti, I do understand him taking that responsibility. Someone has to take the fall. Michael, you followed this legal case closely along with the commission's report where you sat through a lot of the testimony. Do you believe the federal ruling this week vindicates the protesters? It does not vindicate the protesters. This is, I've come to even change my view, in fact, a victory for individual liberties, generally for all Canadians, and for process, because if the laws are going to change it shouldn't be politicians behind the cloak of cabinet secrets reinterpreting existing laws. If they want new laws, they should write them. So what I mean by that is, if you look at Justice Rulo, he obviously, uh, the inquiry, they concluded that the government was in the right in invoking the Emergencies Act. Justice Mosley at the federal court has said, no, it was a legal error and overreach. But other than that final conclusion, these two men are in agreement that the original protest was perfectly legal, but spiraled out of control and was allowed to spiral out of control because the city of Ottawa and province of Ontario sat on their hands and did not enforce the laws on the books, such, a, such that it did become an illegal occupation and what the justices themselves call an unacceptable breakdown in social order. Going forward, this federal court decision sets a precedent. How do you think the Emergencies Act should be updated, if at all? So yes, the federal government is now president. The government intends to appeal. Um, I see a very small door for appeal. They have to basically argue that Mosley, the justice, has made errors of law. Mosley himself, though, I thought in very clever judicial language, he was very diplomatic, did basically come right out and say, look, I understand that you would have liked to have used the law in this way. And it even makes some sense because you did have a problem. But I simply cannot let you take an existing piece of legislation and twist it in that way. Why don't you now go off and write some better legislation? Now I'm paraphrasing, but he more or less says that in one of his paragraphs, he said, look, I apply the black letter law, I can't legislate. Other people might like to legislate, he says. So this is really where we're going. There needs to be major reform the Emergencies Act, and in particular, I would argue that the government does need to untether itself from the famous Section 2 standards of the CSIS Act. That's all the time we have tonight on this discussion. It's always great to talk with you, Professor Kempa. Thank you for joining us tonight on Trending Now. Thank you kindly. Anytime.